I live on top of the hill. But every day I go down to the village to buy the food that I'm going to cook that night. Welcome to what's left of the Italian American neighborhood in San Francisco. I'm Johnny, and this is my North Beach. I'm at Cavalli's getting ready to go shopping to get what I need to make Zeppelin to San Giuseppe. And Santo just came up with a new drink, uh, shake the espresso, absolutely delicious. We're gonna head over to Molinari so I can pick up some of the ingredients I need to make the Zeppelin to San Giuseppe. I had to come down to get some Amarena, those uh, little sour cherries from Campania, they have them here at Molinari. So now I'm all set to go back up the hill and make Zeppelin de San Giuseppe. We're making uh, Zeppelin de San Giuseppe. This is something uh, used to be that was only made one time during the year, and that was on St. Joseph's Day, which is March 19th. Now if you're in uh, Little Italy or other pasticceria, other pastry shops around the country, even in Naples, they're making Zeppelin de San Giuseppe all year round. I'm a traditionalist. I like to do Zeppelin for St. Joseph's Day, which is also Father's Day in Italy on March 19th, and that's it. I won't make them again until next year. The Zeppelin de San Giuseppe requires a cup of water, a cup of flour, six tablespoons of unsalted butter, a tablespoon of sugar, a pinch of salt, and four eggs. So this is a uh, cooked dough. And what I'm gonna do now is just incorporate the uh, water and the butter and the sugar and the salt in this, in this pan over medium heat. I'm gonna add the water and the sugar, the salt, and the butter. And we're just gonna bring this to a boil until the butter melts, and then we're gonna add flour to it. So our butter is uh, melted now, so I'm gonna add all at once the cup of flour and uh, mix this well until it starts coming together as a dough, and it's actually gonna be a paste. Let the flour cook off, the, the taste of the raw flour cook off a little bit. So you see, it's kind of a fun dough to make. I like doing this uh, pate au, ch au show. And you can tell you're getting there because you're going to see a little bit of a film form on the bottom of the pan. See that? It's starting to steam nicely. But I want to let this cool just a little bit and then I'm going to start adding uh, the four eggs. So here goes the first one. Some people, uh, because this is a little arduous, some people will use a hand mixer, an electric hand mixer to do this, but I like working it. And again, work it quickly so you don't end up cooking the egg. You just want it to mix in with this pate au choux, this dough. This is going to give us a really nice beignet eggy uh, crawler for the zeppoli. And here's the uh, fourth egg, the last egg. I'm just going to get this incorporated. Now you, you notice I've done all of this adding of the eggs off the heat. What you want to end up with is, see it's loosening up a little bit and you want to end up with a very glossy pate au uh, choux. Everything well incorporated here. Just to make sure, I'm going to put this back over uh, medium-low heat and just finish it off a little bit over the heat. It's a nice texture, it's smooth, it's going to be very elastic, it's going to be very light. You can see we're forming a little bit of a film down there on the bottom. That's it. Our uh, pate au choux is uh, cooled a little bit. I've got here a pastry bag, and it's got a um, half inch um, star tip, a number six. So you can see this is still a little bit hot, but it's not too hot to handle, so that's fine. And it's a nice pliable dough. I'm gonna kinda crinkle this up here. I'm going to apply some pressure. Now, 
I'm going to make two different kinds of uh, Zeppoli de San Giuseppe. On this parchment paper, on this cooking, uh, uh, cookie sheet, I'm going to make some and we're going to bake them. And then on these little pieces of parchment, uh, we're going to do it the more traditional way. I'm going to pipe them out here and then we're going to fry them. So what we want to do is uh, put out a circle maybe about three inches and keep filling it in this way. We're making like this little rosette pattern. These are the ones on the uh, cookie sheet with parchment paper. These are going to get baked in the oven. These are the ones that are going to get fried. So the same thing, we're just doing, you know, filling them up this way. Let me put these in the oven and we'll let these bake. I got the oven going at uh, 425. We're going to bake them a little bit at that temperature and then I'm going to lower the heat a little bit. So let's get these in and then we'll fry. So this is kind of fun. I'm going to, this is on parchment paper. My oil's at 375. Very carefully, I'm just going to put this in upside down and it's going to start to fry. Here we go. So we'll let that fry on that side for a little bit. I'll get the other one here. And then we're going to jiggle this parchment paper off this one also. See? Very easy. See that's starting to brown up nicely. Gotta let it go a little bit longer. See how nice they come up and you get those ridges? So I think this one is getting about the right color. So we'll turn it over this way to finish. You don't want them to get too uh, brown. You don't want them to burn. And I think this one's going to be ready to go over. Yeah, see that came back nicely. Starting to get a little bit of that uh, effect on the top. So now we're getting close to the color that we want to achieve. See this dark color in here is what we want all the way through. Okay, so these are ready to come out. Can you see this one over here is just starting to crack a little bit? That's a good sign. That means we've got a lot of air and heat on the inside and the dough in the center is uh, probably fully cooked. So I'm going to take these out. We, st we started with a pretty heavy mixture and as it cooked it got lighter. So I can feel that as I'm pulling it up with the tongs. So here's our fried zeppoli, zeppoli fritte. We're going to make the pasta chiera, the boiled cream, the cooked custard that we're going to use in the zeppoli. So let me show you what we're going to, what the ingredients are. Uh, I've got flour here, I've got a little bit of salt, some sugar, I've got four eggs, I've got a quart of milk and a little bit of vanilla that we're going to use to flavor the pasta chiera. But let me start here and get the milk going because we want to bring this up to a gentle boil just until we start to get some bubbles. And I'm going to mix this together. And we're just going to let this stay on the, you know, medium, medium high until we start seeing some bubbles form around the edge. We don't want this to burn on the bottom or to scald. Here's my flour and salt. I'm going to put this in this bowl. Here's the rest of the sugar. I'm going to put that in here. I'm just going to whisk these dry ingredients together. Just uh, make sure they're incorporate it. And now we're going to take our four eggs and we're going to beat these in here. And uh, this is going to be our custard base really. And then when that milk gets up to the proper scald, we're going to temper this and uh, put everything back in that bowl. But it's coming together nicely. And the only other thing that's going to go in here is after it's done cooking, we're going to flavor this a little bit uh, with some vanilla. Okay. So that's pretty smooth, pretty well incorporated. So this uh, milk is heating up nicely. See, we're starting to get a little ring of bubbles around the edge. That's what we want. I'm going to take uh, about a cup or so of the hot milk, and I'm going to put it into that flour and sugar mixture and beat it. We want to really just temper this mixture for the base of the custard. We don't want anything to cook. We don't want those eggs to cook. So we want to be pretty quick about this. See, and that's pretty 
See that texture there? That's pretty good. We don't have any lumps. So that's what we want. And I've gone down to about a, uh, a medium, medium low to finish cooking the custard. Let's get this all out of this bowl. First use my whisk. And you want to keep this moving because you don't want anything to burn and you want to keep this nice and smooth. And as soon as we get our first boil bubble, we're going to take this off. And that could take, you know, three, four minutes. Okay, let's take a look at the uh, baked zapoli. Oh wow, these are looking nice. See, we got that nice little texture on the top. My Aunt Florence used to have a pendant that she wore around her neck. And every time I make these, this shape reminds me of that pendant. See, they're little jewels. So we're pretty much at the end here. Uh, you can see that uh, pasta cheddar has firmed up a little bit. And you know what? No matter how careful you are, you're always going to get some lumps in this. I don't care who you are. And you just use the uh, side of your spatula to kind of work it through the sieve. Sometimes I like to work it on the side here. So here's the cream that uh, went through the strainer. See, we're just going to finish this off with a little bit of pure vanilla just to give it a little bit of flavor. So not too much vanilla. You don't want to overpower it. Maybe a half, half a tablespoon, a couple of teaspoons. Oh, that smells good. I can smell the vanilla. And if you can smell it, that's probably enough. Okay, so we got the uh, pasta cheddar, the boiled cream, the custard in this bag. I'm just going to pipe it into the center of the zapoli. Remember, these are the ones I baked, and the ones back here are the ones that I fried. Now, don't put too much of the uh, pasta cheddar. You just want enough there so that every time they take a bite, they're going to get some of the boiled cream. I'm going to press the tip inside, so I'm getting some filling on the inside. See, it's puffing up a little bit, and then I'm just going to finish it off on top. Try to get a, you know, a nice little design. Puff it up a little bit on the inside. Put some cream this way. Again, not too much. Give them a little taste of it. Now, we're going into the uh, fried one. So again, I'm going to break the surface. And get some inside. See, it's filling up there. Again, not too much. Pipe it around the top. Mmm, these are going to be good eating. And we're not done here. So these are um, Amarena cherries. These are um, from Campania. They're sour cherries. So we're just going to put one on top, put one here. It's okay if the syrup drips a little bit. Just added flavor. Look at that. Make these once a year, only on St. Joseph's Day, March 19th. I haven't had these since last year, and after I finish these, I won't have them again until next year. So I'm going for one of the fried ones. Let's see how they are. Mmm. When you fry the uh, zapoli, you really get a nice nutty flavor to it, and it's very light with that egg uh, beignet. Even just a little bit of that syrup on this pasta cheddar is just out of this world. Mmm. Ha, ha, ha.